getting crowded? Friday, October 11th, 2024. We did it. We did it. Yeah. We got through it's the week. It's Friday. Yeah. Um, you know, we are still uh, reminding people uh, in the uh, wake of the hurricane that there is still a lot of work and recovery um, to do there. So you can certainly help by uh, donating to the Red Cross, redcross.org, to help all of the people affected. In Florida, surrounding areas, very important not to forget because when you have back-to-back -back storm systems like this, it's easy to just sort of, yeah. you know, help out once and forget. But these storms are happening with greater and greater frequency, and yeah. people need more and more help. So, yep. um, so if if you have if you have an impulse and if you have the ability, please think about making a donation to Red Cross. Yes. Okay. So I was reading this article and I started talking to Mark about it and Mark got very defensive. <laughs> why are you why are you reading that article? And I said because I was in an airport for 2 hours and I it just popped up on my news feed and I clicked on it. It was interesting to me. So it's the rise of the gray divorce. Do you know what gray divorces are? No. Well, you came. You came home. You came home from the trip, and you're like, I read this um, this amazing article. I go, tell me about it. I didn't it. say amazing. I said fascinating. Fascinating. Fascinating article. And I go, what's it called? She goes, the astonishing rise of gray divorce. I'm like, do you tell. <laughs> So it's this, these are people that get divorced, you know, in their fifties. Yeah. Like it's like after or later. Like when when you think that you're beyond, you know, you're beyond the vulnerability portion of your life, where you're like, I'm mar I've been married for 182 years. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Anyway, a great divorce is, of course, defined as people in a long-term marriage, usually above the age of 50. Um, what happens in a great divorce, back in 1990, only 8.7% of marriages among people over 50 ended in divorce. And by 2019, that number had jumped to 36%. Wow. Yeah. Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, yes. Pre-COVID. Uh, they're saying that empty nest syndrome can contribute to that. That's Sometimes a real thing. relationships are so built upon the children that yeah. once the children leave, right. the couple finds that they no longer have anything in common. Um, we still have a lot in common. Okay. Um, I don't even know who you are anymore. I don't even know. It's who like, are I, you? I come to work and it's like I'm married. Who are you? <laughs> Infidelity is another. Uh, in, uh, uh, but that's across all ages of marriages, I think. Infidelity. Yes, but I think that uh, I think that's, that, a, that's a factor. Yeah. Yes, but I think that when a, a, a woman or a man is in their peak maturity, they're in their fifties, they're not willing to maybe tolerate that mm. anymore. Like the way I think, like there's more forgiveness in a in a younger couple. I don't know. I'm just like theorizing. It doesn't say that here in this article, but this is my theory. Health problems in sickness and in health. Some people say no, not sit in sickness. All right. You would take care of me though. You yeah, change my diapers. Of course I would. <laughs> of course I would. It's gonna happen. I mean, of course I will. Okay. I do it all the time. <laughs> Um, growing apart, sometimes people just sort of, you know, they stop having things in common, they don't have a lot between them, and they just grow apart. Um, and then societal changes, there's no stigma in divorce anymore, so that's also why people are like, I'm free. So that's, uh, that's the, the article, article on this astonishing rise of the gray divorce, but I listened to it, it was an article that oh, was oh, yeah. on audio, and you really have to hear it read to you because there's something about the narrator's voice that I find very funny. Oh, really? Yes. They're like, the astonishing rise of the gray divorce. And I was like, oh, I want 
one. Like it sounds, you know, it sounds like something amazing. And then, and then you realize, oh, this is very dark subject matter. But the voice of the narrator is so soothing. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting article. The, the, the best place to meet your future partner at every age. Okay. So if you go through a great divorce, then yes. uh, listen up. Um, so we asked experts to share their recommendations for folks at any age who are looking for this cuffing season. I guess cuffing season is in October. <laughs> and it goes into the is holidays. It? I why did you guys laugh? Is that funny? Yeah, because, yeah, October marks the beginning of cuffing season. Okay. It's a time when people actively look to find a romantic partner as the weather cools down. And then you can spend the holidays with. Yeah. You know, those special days. Um, if you're in your 20s, <laughs> uh, the best place to meet a romantic partner is through school or friend connections. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, a lot of kids meet in college. Not on TikTok. No. <laughs> Parties, hangouts. Diverse social circles. If you're in your 30s, um, things are a little different. People tend to couple up and, and time may be more precious. So uh, you often have deeper friendships to lean on. All right, so your friends. Plus, you're often more confident approaching strangers. Mm. Um, in your 40s, Desperation best place that. to meet a romantic partner is anywhere you enjoy spending time. Okay, it may be difficult to make time for dating, especially if you have kids. So, you know, like if you, in things you like to do. Um, like paddle ball or pickleball or church. church. Yeah. If you're in your 50s, it's up to your social circle and your routines. So this presents an opportunity, however, to find new activities and venues to connect with someone special. In your 60s, you're looking for ways to maybe to stay intellectually sharp. Uh, take a class or attend a workshop. It's perfect for singles in their 60s. At 70 plus, it's all about having fun and staying active. Uh-huh. And if in your 80s... <laughs> The villages. <laughs> the villages in Florida. Um, do you ever have dreams that your teeth are falling out? I've never had that dream, but you, you had... do. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I've had that dream. Yeah, too. they're breaking, right? I dream that I have bitten down, and then all of my teeth are broken. I've never had that dream. You've never had that dream. No. Okay. So do you want to hear what it means? Yeah, what does it mean? Teeth represent our ability to communicate. <gasps> um, they also symbolize anxiety. If you dream that your teeth are falling out, you may be feeling unbalanced or self-sabotaging. Mm. Does that feel is like that, you? Does that, is that yes? tracking? Oh my gosh, we're going to talk. We have to get Dr. Gail Saltz here to talk to this lady <laughs> in the front row. Um, if you, do you dream that your teeth are falling out one by one? Uh, the back teeth are falling out, and they're, and then I have a retainer, like I have my braces on still, and they're all messed up. <laughs> oh, geez, I don't know if we can help you here. <laughs> if, your if you dream that your teeth are falling out one by one, it signals a chain reaction happening for the dreamer. The message is to pay attention to what is consequential, okay? to things happening in your life. If, you're, if you dream that your teeth fall out all at once, it's a signal to pay attention to what feels catastrophic in your life. Mm. Without your teeth, you can't say what you need to say. Um, if you dream that your teeth are crumbling, so I feel like, I feel like I'm a combination yeah. of several of these things. I may be, I may be When's beyond help that? Also. When's the last time you had that? It's been years. It's, been, it's years. been a long time. Um, if the front teeth are crumbling, the issue may be more appearance based. If it's the molars or back teeth, the issue is more foundational. Oh. And if you dream that your teeth are cracking, this is a message to pay attention to the cracks in the foundation in your life. Mm. So. Wow. Um, but I, the dream I used to have was that I would bite down and I would crack all of my teeth and just, and then I would just be spitting them out. But then I would wake up and... And there, and, and there they were. There they were. <laughs> and everything was fine and I was happy again. Wow. Um, so I don't know. That sounds like three different, three different issues. But I haven't had it in a long time. Hmm. I haven't yeah. had it. What if you wake up and you think that your, your teeth are beautiful? <laughs> If you dream your embraces, ah. you had that dream. You're negotiating something that's about to change. Mm. Is that true? Yes, we're moving. They're moving. They're moving. Uh, there you go. It's right here. Yes. That's why you're
You like the Long Island medium. The Long I'm Island the New medium. Jersey medium. New Jersey medium. Yeah, the New Jersey medium. Yeah. Okay. We've got a huge show today. Andrew Garfield is here. the maker today we are wrapping up viral challenges week by the way i believe i've announced that we've been wrapping it up every all week. day every day this week uh back to coach us is mark santa maria from crunch fitness let's check in with mark right now all right mark Hi. what are we doing today we've got a really cool one this is the partner cartwheel challenge okay uh -huh. it's actually you're going to work a lot of legs great leg extension so check it out You've got a base of support, the person helps lift, and then, do you see that beautiful leg extension? Beautiful. I'm it's, not doing the leg extension. No, you're, you're going to be the base and take I'm power of those okay. powerful legs, yeah. Okay. It's going to be fun. All right, Mark, we'll see you in a bit. I think we can do this one. You think? I feel, I feel confident You about feel this like one. you can lift me up and... Yeah! It's that time. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time to play. All right, let's say hello to Sherry McDonald from Norfolk, Virginia, who watches the show on WVEC. Good morning, Sherry. How are you? I'm good. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Mark. Hey, you're a Buffalo Bills fan, huh? Yes. Go Bills. Go Bills. Diana. Yes. <laughs> Sherry, you know how this game works. You've given us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which is the truth. And if you stump me, you'll win this. All right, Sherry, you're too... We're, we're staring at your picture yeah. because we're trying to... Is that a recent picture? That was a year ago when I went to the... Buffalo Jets game. Okay. Um, here are Sherry's two statements. I have six grandchildren in the last six years, or my other four siblings are twins. We know people like that, right? We have a, we have yeah. a family that, that yes. has twins like that. Triplets, too, right? Triplets, twins, twins and a single. And a single. All right. Um, how old is your oldest grandchild? He's six. He's six. Wow, you look great. <laughs> How old are you? 48. Uh, okay, um, are they identical twins, your siblings? Paternal. Paternal. I guess that could work. 42, 22, yes. How, how old was your, 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 oh, never mind. I guess that could, the timing could work, 48. Oh my God, we could have six grandchildren right now. <laughs> what are you talking okay. about? All right, this, I, I think it's probably the most outlandish one because I think, I, I just think you're, you're very young to be a grandmother, which yeah, is great. Yes, but also it's like she also includes a photo of herself where she looks like she's maybe 18 years old. So I'm like trying to, I'm like, is, yeah, this that, is, all... is she trapping us? She's trapping me. She's, she's trapping trying me. trying to confuse us. All right, I think you have six grandchildren in the last six years. You're right, Mark. <laughs> That is the last thing I would think. Wow. How how amazing is that for you? Are you enjoying this? Oh, I love it. I'm yeah. with them all the time. Oh. What do they call you? Grandma. Grandma. Grandma? I, I, yeah, I didn't I didn't pick that name. I'm gonna let them pick it later on. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, listen. Uh, I wish you would have won the mug and the T-shirt, but you didn't. Uh, but but listen. <laughs> you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Great Getaways Travel Trivia. Hey, that's Isabella Amato, the queen of Queens, New York. See if we can't win Sharia Prize. All right. Hey, 
It's a trip for two to the Club Barbados. Seven days and six nights in an oceanfront room. It's all-inclusive. It's a prize valued at $9,000. Shree, you have 20 seconds and only one guest. Good luck. Okay, Shree, here we go. Earlier this week, we talked with Morris Chestnut. What exercise machine did Morse say is his current form of exercise? Did you see that show? I did not. Um, Ooh. It's okay. It's okay. Peloton? Um, oh, exercise bike? Oh, exercise bike. No, good, good, good guess, though. Good guess. It was a Stairmaster. Stair master. The old school oh. Stairmaster. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Sorry, Sheree, but Sorry. listen, there's still exciting news. You'll now be entered into our grand prize drawing for a 13-day voyage to Antarctica. It's a prize valued at over $42,000. And now you, the lucky member of our studio audience, will each receive a Roomba vacuum cleaner from iRobot. So please pick a number between 1 and 190. 13. 13. Oh, no! you won because those teeth dreams are so scary and maybe not having to vacuum will take away some of that anxiety. And the number 13. So yeah, lucky number exactly. 13. Good. I'm so happy. Right. Okay. Uh -oh. Guys. Listen, listen, listen up. We've got the biggest announcement to make. We are so happy to share that live. That's right. This here little show is hitting the road, and this time we're heading to Palm Springs. We did it. We manifested that here. We made that happen through the sheer will of us begging to do the show in Palm Springs. Okay, we're, we're doing four shows from the Westin Rancho Mirage Golf and Resort Spa in Rancho Mirage, California. And if you're going to be in the Rancho Mirage area or one of the nine cities within the greater Palm Springs area on November 10th and 11th, we'd love to see you in our audience. Go to our website for all the details. So exciting. I mean... We're going to be warm in November. <laughs> right? Can't wait. Oh Can't, wait. God. Can't wait. So oh. beautiful out there. Heaven. All right. We've got a big show ahead with Andrew Garfield when we return. Stick around. Still ahead on Live from Abbott Elementary, Tyler James Williams. We'll try our final viral challenge. And coming up next, Andrew Garfield. Does that take a lot of maintenance? Do you put red, like beer oil, and beard oil? Like this is all natural right natural. now. This just is what it is. Was this yeah. for a roll, yes? No, this is just pure laziness. Pure just, laziness? Uh, yeah, it Amazing. covers up a, a kind of like a lot of, yeah, things that you don't want seen. It's like a lovely way of not having to deal with your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. You, you've, you've grown I, a beard in the past, I, I'm I sure. Do, but Just I like you would grow a strong he one. He can grow a beard like, by the th end of this show. That's, if, yeah. But I start itching. Do you ever, do you ever start like manipulating yeah. it at first? It, and gets, it, it gets to the sore, point right? where you need to change it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew, <laughs> you did it. You, you just recently had a milestone birthday. I did it. I survived. You survived. I, until you turned the big four up. Four zero. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you do? Did you do a big bash? How did you celebrate? So I wasn't really worried about. I don't know how you guys felt when you turned 30, 40. You know, I don't know how. We can't remember. We can't remember. Tell us. Do you remember? <laughs> what what I, we can't remember. But anyway, I I wasn't nervous until about three months before. Yeah. I didn't expect to have any kind of feeling about it. I was like, oh no, this is just another birthday, and yeah. it doesn't really matter. But then I don't know. Three months before, I started to go. 
oh no, <laughs> this is midlife. And I think I started having the, a version of a midlife crisis and I was like, I need to make sure I have cushions so that I don't go absolutely mad and like hurt myself on this midlife crisis. So I created a lot of very fun, beautiful, I had like a big party in London with friends and then I took my, my family and my nephews away surfing and then oh, I, I, I took friends away to Sicily for a holiday. Oh, so nice. I, just, I padded it out so that, it, so that I wouldn't amazing. go into an existential yeah, kind I'm gonna, of I'm gonna make it better for you. Please, because please. Because we live so much longer now that 40 is no longer <laughs> midlife at all. You've got another decade before you get to have your wow. midlife crisis. Oh my God, so I just so wasted all of that. You wasted yes. all of that. <laughs> well, you were practicing. It was a practicing yeah, yeah, of the But you are an uncle. You Are you the funkle? You're the fun uncle? The funkle. I, the, I'm a funkle, for yeah. sure. They, they have lots of fun uncles. Oh, they do? Yeah, yeah. I'm just one of them, but I they are my favorite human beings. Are you my, competitive my to be the funkle? Yeah, do you want to be the... <laughs> Favorite? I, I'd be lying if I said no, so I'm going to have to be honest. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> you want to you provide them with the most joy and fun and the most rebellion. You know, I think like the uncles get to be the ones that allow their siblings' kids to be very rebellious and do the things they're not allowed to do when they're... You stir them up, you oh, get yeah, them all riled up, yeah. and you give them right back. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and you buy them all the things their parents would never approve of. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But mostly my, my nephews like Lego, so they're, they're, they're oh, pretty... Oh, that's they're, amazing. They're, they're, they're still they're, at the Lego age. Yeah, they're, 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 they're right. likes are pretty tame right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, so this summer, you shot two films... At the same time? Pretty much, yeah. You were going back and forth from set to set? Yeah, yeah. Did you find did, did you find that confusing? <laughs> did you yeah. find like, all right, who am I? All right, what am I doing here yeah. today? And Who I, am I? What am I? Where am I? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd never done that before um, because I like to be very, very focused on, on sure. the one thing that's in front of me. But I, you kind of forget, like, actors back in the day of repertory theater, they would be playing multiple roles at the same time. One person might be playing Hamlet while they're also playing, you know, a spear carrier in Macbeth or, okay. uh, or like, you know, the fool in King Lear and they would, they would rotate. So you, it, was, it was like a school of acting in a Shakespeare company. And I kind of thought, oh, well, that sounds like kind of an interesting challenge and maybe will help me to be less precious about what I'm, and it could be kind of, and they were very, very different films. Mm. I'm playing a philosophy professor in, in Yale University in one, okay. in Luca Guadagnino's next film, and then I'm playing a kind of hippie dad who wants their <laughs> kids so different. to like, you know, be connected with nature again. And we move out to the country, and it's like a family film by the guys who made Paddington. So it's two very, very different worlds, and I found it. I found it joyful. I was very, very lucky. Were you able, looks-wise, to pull off both <laughs> characters? Because they sound like they would look quite divergent. They are quite divergent. They both did have quite big beards, though. Okay. And it, and it made, it made sense. There's like a hippie beard, and then there's like a philosophy a professor beard. beard. Yes. But, but, and one of them does this a lot, and the other one doesn't. So that's <laughs> like, perfect. Those All are right. the, the character distinctions. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to Andrew about his new film, We Live in Time. Stick around. Still ahead on Live from Abbott Elementary, Tyler James Williams. She's great. She's fantastic. She is yeah, yeah. one of a kind, it, once it, in a generation talent. Yeah. Is that what they call chemistry right there? I, I, Are I, we I, watching that like chemistry explode? You guys know all about chemistry. Yeah, it was that popping was like, off the screen. But I was like, uh, I was like, oh, and that's what they mean. Well, what happens next yes. after that? Well, it's a spoiler, but we we make out furiously straight you after do. that. You do? <laughs> yeah, just to kind of like tease up the, the movie a bit more for you guys. Yeah, because the movie is We Live in Time. Can you tell us a little bit about it more than just the make out scene? Yeah, totally. Well, it's based on make out. Yes. Yeah. Um, but 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 it's it's a story about two ordinary people, two ordinary British people who. Uh, meet each other, she runs him over in her car <laughs> and um, puts him in hospital accidentally and they, it's like a kind of very unexpected meet cute that happens and they, um, they end up creating a life together out of that moment and the film is told over a series of uh, 10 years but it's all told out of sequence like as if you're remembering the relationship out of sequence and it's about love it's about loss it's about the risks of love the courage it takes to love mm -hmm. and the courage it takes to 
go towards and, and long for the things that you truly long for and, and dream of in this life. It's kind of about all of us. It's kind of about all of our dreams. And um, yeah, I think it's a very, very beautiful mm. human, human film. And you get to shave Florence Pugh's um, head in this. I do. I love that you said you get to. <laughs> You're like, a privilege. Right? Yeah. It is a privilege. No, but I would be terrified I to was. shave her beautiful <laughs> I know. hair off. I know. Were you thank, nervous? I, I was, but thank God she has a wonderfully shaped head because, you know. <laughs> yeah, but how do you, Wait, know, how do you, you know, know you don't until know you don't. going in? I was reassuring to her while we were shooting. I was, I was, as soon as I knew, as soon as I, you know, I was like doing the kind of like the braille, I was like, feel, I was like, you're going to be fine. You're going to be absolutely fine. Um, and it was great. And it was beautiful. It's a very beautiful tender moment in the in the film between myself and her and, and our daughter in the film and uh, yeah it's a gorgeous gorgeous moment but yeah it was I was scared I was absolutely I was I shaved my own head I've never shaved another person's yeah. head so yeah same big I, responsibility yeah I think it's a huge yeah. responsibility and she didn't see it right like she wasn't able to watch no. it as it was happening no I would occasionally show her in the mirror and she would like or, or give her give her my phone to use like to flip and kind of see but um you know it was we had one shot at filming it it was one take obviously we can't right. like play like plaster the hair back <laughs> right. on right. so like the cameras all had to be operating properly our, our cinematographer was really nervous about something wow. failing yeah and you know because you get one opportunity to capture such a important beautiful moment and for Florence herself and she kept a lot of her hair she gave me a little piece of it as like Aww. a memento Aww. yeah sweet I think that's quite sweet it is quite sweet <laughs> and you took two years off before working I've taken two years off, and in the middle of it, I made this film. Oh, you made that because okay, I, I because this film yeah it, it had to be made. It has to be made, and yeah. also in, in the two years off I've I've had, I was reflecting on you know that beginning of maybe early midlife, where I'm reflecting on life, looking back, looking forward, asking big questions about what we're doing here, and thinking, oh, I've had a lovely time so far. I'd like to have a lovely time in the future, but it's going to feel different. I know it's going to change, and I was asking lots of questions, just you know the meaningful questions about how to live and then I read this script and I thought oh this is exactly the area that I'm living through anyway so better put all these feelings to good use and make it a film make a film out of it and give it to an audience and hopefully other people can can feel themselves reflected in the film you know well, we're glad you did me too yeah. we live in time opens in New York and LA today nationwide on October 18th Come up next Tyler James Drink it all in. You know? It is so good. Thank you. Thank you. And I have to say, you, for me, had the look of the night at the Emmys. Look of the night. Yeah. The Thank best, you. the hottest. I don't know if you saw his costume, <laughs> but you showed off the guns. You yeah, showed yeah, yeah. off the tats. I decided to bring them out. Uh, you, yeah. You, you look there, you go. there. There it is. For those, yeah, that was yeah. fun. It was dope. Yeah. I like that. You know, Dolce? I, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell, we saw each other at a play, I think. Yes, yes. we did. Down Downtown. So downtown, I go, I go yeah. downtown oh. to a play. Where was I? Um, <laughs> you, were, you were busy, I think. I was, and you were busy. I was, was busy. the oldest person there by 20 years. Okay. Except for me and Chris Rock. You would never okay. know. Okay. Me and Chris Rock. <laughs> never know it. And I see Tyler there, and he's look, he looks just as cool. It was one of those really yeah, cool like she, downtown she moments. Yeah, yeah, it was really nice. I ran into Chris that night, too. I didn't, I didn't even know he was there. We end up in the same room sometimes. And yeah. it's like, oh, hey. Right. From... Yeah. Way back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. How you doing? Right. How you doing? It was Amazing. actually a really, that was a good play. It was, it was a great play. It was yeah. really fun. Um, so, I, you know, I was looking at that photo of you, and I was looking at your tattoos. Yeah. And I counted about four. Okay. But Dolores told me that you have like 30 something. Something. 30 something. Wow. Where are the yeah. rest of them? <laughs> Everywhere. Just a little bit. I kind of turned myself into a little canvas as I got older. I can't stop. You know, do, you, yeah. do you ever show up to the tattoo parlor not knowing exactly what you want? Every single time. Oh, no really? Way. Every single time. So my tattoo artist, his name is Michael Mendoza. I send him an idea. Sometimes it's just like a few words. Uh -huh. And he'll come up with a bunch of different options. And on the day, I'll be like, yeah, that one. Yeah. 
then they will decide where it's supposed to That's go. That's trust. Sometimes it's two of them. It's he's just a beautiful artist. I, I yeah. fell in love with his work and was like, Is he in New York or LA? He's in LA. LA. He's in LA, and I was like, my body will be your canvas. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. he does excellent. He does work. a really good yeah. job. Yeah. yeah. So now you are doing something we cannot, in our minds, conceive of. <laughs> you are living. With your brothers. Yes. And okay. you're renovating your apartment. Yes. Together. Yes. While you're yes. so all together. So yeah, this we tried to kill each other as kids. Okay. okay. That was That's it's part of the yeah. process, part right? Of the you process. want to be as far away from each other as you possibly uh -huh. can. But then we found as we got older, we had more in common and just I don't know, there's there's something about it that I can't imagine not living with them at this point. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, no, we've done what it for What age like, did you find yourselves re It was after we all turned 19. So we're four years apart each. Okay, got it. So when my baby brother turned like 18, 19, it actually happened because of the pandemic. Ah. Uh, he had like come out to LA, was like staying with some friends, and then the pandemic hit and we were like, we all have to shelter in place and it just worked. It made it so fun, and we're like kids again. We're like, you know, I get off work, and we're sitting up playing video games for hours. Who's <laughs> the one, though? Who's the one roommate? Mm -hmm. It's the, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh, There's always the one. one that's like... The, the biggest slob, the biggest Doesn't mess. put the, the ice cream Forgets ball to in lock the... everything. Yeah. That's you know. my middle brother, Tyra. <laughs> he knows. He's aware. He's aware. He knows. He knows. It's just, you come down to the kitchen and you're like, did you make a cake and breakfast? Like, what is, like, why is everything right. out here? Of course. But that's also a thing, like, we know that about each other. We, like, kind of cover each other's tracks. I'm definitely the one who's most likely to kind of, like, fall asleep in the middle of something. Right. And a lot of times I fall asleep and someone just, like, covers me with a blanket. And I don't know where that is or who it was. It's so nice, though. It is. It's that's super nice. nice. Anybody who has, like, kids and they hate each other now, maybe this happens later. Yeah. Just yeah. give it, like, 20 years. And they're all... They're all in the industry. Yeah, we're so. all in the industry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you're, you're, wait, did you lead the way? Yeah. Probably one of the reasons why I think we tried to kill each other. Um, <laughs> so my middle brother got his first job on a commercial. He stole it from me. What? He stole it from me. No. I was there. I but was he like, was younger. I was like five. And I was just, it was a glad commercial, right? And I was there. I didn't went in there, did my thing. My mom lost track of him. And he was like 18 months. And he walked into the room. And they were like, it's you. It's him. They changed the whole commercial. It was built for like a five-year-old. All of a sudden, you have this baby now in the carriage you know looking what? cute. Hollywood is so cruel. It's crazy Ageism like that. even it's, it's really, even, it's did you, did you, Were you even aware of the, the, the emotion of envy at, at five? I wasn't aware of the emotion of envy, but I was like, I was almost positive this was for me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know that's why we got on the train <laughs> to come here, but okay. All right. Now, thankfully, we're like old enough that like we're spaced out in the work that we do. Yeah, exactly. Um, of course. In fact, my middle brother just he's on the show Party Down. And their oh, crew yeah. is the Abbott crew as well. So oh, now wow. crews are working with both of us and like seeing the differences between the two of us. And you nice. want to be the favorite actor on set between like of the crew to I ever am. pull them aside and say, Who's the It has to be me, yeah. It no, it's me. It's me. Yeah, no, it's me. Still there. Yeah. Competitive right. spirit Always. Is still there. Okay. We're gonna take a break. Uh, when we come back, Tyler will tell us well, Roman. There you go. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. I get it. We, yeah. we have a wrestler, and the ringworm is... Ringworm is real. Ringworm is very, very real. It was like... It's, that's a really fun episode, because we started the season in the middle of the pandemic. Right. But we never got a chance to really talk about it. Right. So that's kind of our way of a little bit talking about the psychosis that went into that period of time. It's well, really fun. Ringworm will bring will that, that out in people. It, yeah. 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 It, it will do sure that. will. We somehow avoided it on our set. I don't know how. We have a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's true. So, uh, so there was, uh, we talked about it uh, with Quinta. She was here mm -hmm. earlier this week. <laughs> we talked about uh, the cliffhanger. Right. The kiss. Yes. Will we pick up where we left off? Will we see? We will get filled in. Filled in? We will get filled in. We can't pick it up from that night because that would be... That's a shame. So it's, I'm so sorry. That's I'm okay. so sorry. We do what we can. Um, but yeah, we do a good amount of filling in over the course what of what happened over the summer. Over the summer. Over the summer. Yes. How they're... Um, 
relationship bloomed a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it's really fun to just kind of be able to go into this next phase of the show. You know, you spend four years building to a thing. Yeah. Um, it's really nice to now play their little idiosyncrasies uh, uh, together. As a, ch as a child actor, yeah. what, what's it like working with the kids that you work with now? Do you see yourself in them? Oh my gosh, so much. Every day. Like you see their little eyes light up and they're asking questions and, and they can't sit still to save their life. Right. And it's like, yeah, I remember that time. And this like I want to make it fun for them as much as possible, like an after school thing. Um, but then there's some that you're like, no, you're a little bit too good. You're gonna right. be here for a while. Like a small adult trapped in a child. Yeah, trapped. yeah, yeah. We have like one or two like that, and it's uncanny, but it's like, oh, you're gonna be giving it's me also, a job it's later. Also, yes. It's spooky as hell. It, it is, it is. Yeah. I yeah. get why people looked at me the way they did when I was young. Yeah. I, get I, get, I get that weird, like, yeah. you're not supposed a to know the things like that you do. You're like an adult in a child's yes. body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yep. You, you get to work with the amazing uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph. Yeah, oh yeah. My What's, God. Well, tell us about that. Uh, yeah. So I met Cheryl because she did a show for four years called Instant Mom with my baby brother. Okay. So we had known each wow. other for a while. And when Quinta brought her name up for this, I was like, absolutely, there's really nobody else. She's been a gift. So like, she's just perpetually on. She and is generationally a gift. Every gener generation has a significant Cheryl Lee Ralph touchstone moment. moment. Show, film, and like I don't think people really understand how hard that is to do. Oh, it's to, impossible to do. She doesn't have an era. Yeah, you know? This whole thing is her era. Yeah, We're living Cheryl. in the time of Cheryl Lee Roth. Đây hình xích tới xích tới hả? Tại cái tiếp mới các bạn nha, lại cái bậc cao cao lên. À không tiếp mới nhưng mà cũ. Lại cái bậc cao cao quốc nó. Đó, quá dễ dàng đúng không? Rồi bây giờ chúng ta chỉ việc là đánh 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 lên đầu nó Bây giờ chúng ta đang nằm kề trên Chúng ta sẽ đánh lên đầu nó Ui, hỏi cái con level 70 kia Thầy biết chị bị bao nhiêu chưa? Đó, chị này tới 75 rồi đó Chê chưa? Đứng lên lóc nhà hả? Quốc lương này Đó Bập Đi lên Qua đây Bập Nhanh coi Chậm chạp ừ. à. À. Các bạn đừng nghĩ mình giữ nha không Mình không có giữ đâu Nhìn đến nó thì mệt vô lắm à Ê Đóng tay đôi luôn đi Vì mệt quá Sao? Wait me, I be back À, nó kêu là... Không, cái bạn này kêu là chờ tôi Tôi uh, sẽ chuẩn bị quay lại nha Nhưng mà... Không chờ Tại vì mình có biết ai đâu chờ Các bạn đó nói với bạn của bạn á Bạn của bạn... Ừ, bạn của bạn á Các bạn có thấy càng ngày kỹ thuật mình càng lên tay không? Ê, để cho chị ác quỷ cái coi Chém đã chưa? Chém đã rồi tới chị nè 